Awesome. So the recording has begun. So with that, welcome to the SRPC Chapter 3, American Indian Alaskan Native, um, also known as Native American and Indigenous Students webinar. So today I'll be serving as your facilitator. My name is Ivan Hernandez and I serve as the Vice President for the Student Center for California Community Colleges. We also have our amazing leadership team. So Jay and Kaylin, please feel free to introduce yourself. Hi, uh, my name is Jay Doherty. I'm the Legislative Affairs Director for Region 2. Um, I, in my capacity uh, with SSCCC and then within my district, have uh, just been working with our Native American Resource Center um, that at ARC specifically has sort of been leading the charge um, district-wide. Mm -hmm. And so just been talking to them, seeing how they can take it more statewide. Thank you. Thank you. Here then. Hi everyone, my name is Caitlin Zhang. I'm the Legislative Affairs Director for Region 3, and I'm super excited to see what this town hall will bring. Thank you. Awesome. So let's move forward to some housekeeping rules. So first, this webinar is recorded and will be archived on the Student Senate YouTube channel for anyone who would like to take a look at what has been discussed during our webinar in the future. And then two, the live transcription is turned on. With that, we're going to move on to the agenda. So during this town hall, we have four main areas we want to cover. One being the purpose, which I'll discuss in just a second. What is the purpose of this town hall? Why are we even hosting it in the first place? Two, we're going to go over a little bit about who we are and by who we mean the Student Center for California Community Colleges. What is some of the work that we have been doing and what are we doing to represent all the students throughout the state? Then we'll be going and spending most of the time in our chapter presentation. Um, and I'll talk more about what a chapter means, but essentially it's a document that comprises information on a, a specific underserved community. And uh, we'll be spending most of our time looking over the document. I'll share it with you all. You all can read it at your own time, but I'll also go over some of the highlights of this document. And then most of our time will also be spent looking into feedback and Q&As. So the goal is that when we have in go over this document, this chapter, you all can provide information to us to let me let us know basically if it represents you properly, what should be added, what should be deleted, and so forth. So it should be a very nice and a smooth conversation. This is by no means anything formal. It's more of an informal conversation for all of, for all of us to have. So with that, the purpose of this webinar, as probably I already provided some background on this, but Every year, the Student Center for California Community, Community Colleges, SCCC, decides to host a chapter. A chapter is a document that provides, um, that collects information from students from a specific underserved community. These are, this year, we have two different chapters. We have chapter three, which uh, thankfully we're doing this town hall right now, and focuses more into our American Indian, Alaska Native, also known as Native American and Indigenous students. We're also hosting chapter four, which is our undocumented students community. Um, essentially, we get the students input, we then bring it to to this document we share with different sister partners. And in the end, when General Assembly, which is our annual conference where all delegates raise their attend and vote on this to approve, that's when essentially it becomes um, official and then everyone has access to this document. So um, the idea is to introduce the chapter, get input from you all, and then hopefully with all of that input, we can ensure that it's finalized and then it gets approved on General Assembly. So let's move forward a little bit and, and let's talk about who we are in the first place. Well, the Student Center for California Community Colleges, also known as the SSCCC, is a 501c3 nonprofit student-led organization that represents over 2 million, finally 2 million. It used to, when I became vice president, it was 1.8, then we jumped into 1.9, and finally we're over 2 million California Community Colleges, which is amazing. We're going back um, after the pandemic, where our enrollment is increasing. We represent them from across 116 California Community Colleges. And we have three pillars of engagement that guide the SSCCC. One being the system participatory governance, which means that we appoint students to sit in different participatory governance committees throughout the state. Um, uh, our own members of this board of directors sit on these committees and then they provide a student perspective in, uh, alongside our system partners. We also do a legislative and policy advocacy. We are constantly a 
are constantly advocating with state assembly members, the state senators, and, and congressional representatives on different bills that impact student outcome. Um, we not too long ago traveled to Washington, D.C. to attend the ASA conference, um, where we spent time talking to our congressional and, and senator representatives and in basically advocating for key issues that we think should be addressed within the next legislative cycle that impact students from our California community college system. Um, and the last that we have is our regional support and development. And primarily, this is where we get most of our engagement from our students. So to give you an overview, the Student Center for California Community Colleges has over 10 different regions. And Region 1 serves in the northern area of California, whereas Region 10 serves in the San Diego area. So the 10 regions are spread across the state. Um, and that's how we are in contact with local student governments from your colleges. That's how we are constantly getting involved and not just doing work at the state level, but also locally, and then hopefully inspiring other students who wants to run for these positions next year. And then they serve as the head of the organization for the upcoming years. So that's a bit of who we are. Now, if we talk a bit about the chapter in general, the chapter, as mentioned previously, is a document comprised of a student's stories, data, and goals on a specific underserved community. The SRPC has completed two chapters in the past. This was an initiative that started back in 2020. And our first chapter was on focus on our African-American and Black student population. Our chapter two was focused on our anti-Asian hate, and um, which focused on Asian and Pacific Islander community. And then this year, we're doing two different ones. So we're doing our Native American and Indigenous students one, as well as our undocumented students. So we decided to do two, since there is a very popular demand on having these chapters ready to go as soon as possible. So with that, we're going to start transitioning into the chapter draft document. And I'll go ahead and open it in this page. And then I'll share the link with everyone so you all can also time in and read it at your own time. So tum, 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 give me a second. And then we... Okay, I have shared the document with everyone and I'm hoping... Um... Okay, good. Um... Probably someone forgot to turn on, turn off their audio. But essentially in this document, this is the work that we have done thus far. I should have said that in order for us to get to this point, we have had a task force group, a task force group comprised of Native American and indigenous students from throughout the state who have willingly shared their stories and help us create this. This document has data, um, it has student stories, it has solutions from the students that they would like to see implemented, and then also next steps and so forth. So now that I shared this document with everyone, I'll just go over some of the highlights. And like I mentioned, most of our time will be devoted towards answering questions and getting feedback. And we do have a Q&A question section at the end. So in case I do not get to answer your questions right now, I'll just do it towards the end. But just to give an overview, this is just the document. It will be implemented in a better and nicer format where there will be pictures and it will be more on a PDF and it will be available on our website. So this is more of, the, more of the structure. As soon as we get any more input, we can then start making it nicer and putting it professional. So we begin by having our title, chapter three, um, and then our chapters are usually called anti-racism, a student plan of action, and then we go into the specific, uh, specifics. So in this case, American Indian, Alaska Native, um, and then between parentheses, Native American and indigenous students. Now you may say, why do we have in parentheses Native Americans? Well, we have heard from multiple individuals from our Native American um, communities that some of them prefer American Indian, Alaska Native, some other ones prefer Native American. So we wanted to be mindful of that and have that in our document. We have an introduction. Basically, we provide a few sentences as to who is the SCCC, um, how do we represent students, and then what are we doing in this chapter? We focus specifically on our Native American and Indigenous students, and then um, we provide also some data, and, and I have the links, so I'll just have to add them. But essentially, we provide data such as among the Indigenous people are those from Americas, from example, the Lakota in the USA, the Maja in Guatemala, or the Aymaras in Bolivia. 
And the reason why is because um, at first we began this chapter acknowledging that it was primarily for Native American students. However, we then heard that we have many indigenous students who come from different parts of the country. And we also wanted to add them since some of the struggles that they experience are pretty similar. Um, we provided a bit of overview in the um, classroom experience and how that relates to their entire performance in general. And then we also acknowledge that for the past few months, the SCCC has connected with American Indian and Alaskan Native students from across the state to get this work. So that's more like an introduction. Um, in that same page, we are like under the same introduction, we then go very in detail into um, the American Indian and Alaska Native student community, providing more information on those, and then primarily pointing out different issues that have been brought to us. So for example, cultural mismatch, lack of representation, education disparities, language preservation, misuse or proper naming convention, high dropout rates, and so forth. So this is essentially very important because when members, any member of the public who would like to get a better understanding of our American Indian, Alaska Native and Indigenous students, they can start off by learning about who we are and how do we represent all the students and then learning very in detail on this community and what are some of the major issues they're currently facing. And we decided to be very descriptive. So for example, in lack of representation, we provided more information. So for example, the underrepresentation of Native American educators, administrators, and curricula that accumulates represent Native history and, cu and culture can contribute to feelings of isolation and lack of cultural relevance in the education experience. So not only did we provide it, these are the issues that our students are facing, but we also decided to provide very in detail information on how this is impacting the, not only impacting the student, but also focusing on our administrators and faculty as well. So there's that area. You can take a look uh, at it uh, using the link. Then we decided to add these sections, which one is cultural awareness and respect, essentially just acknowledging that we need to create a climate of cultural awareness and respect to allow students of any color to feel welcome, free to express their opinions and safe in every collegiate environment. Um, we also provided this in our chapter four for undocumented students. So this is a more generic statement acknowledging that our classroom needs to be more DIA initiate um, base. We also have our equity trainings where we um, provide suggestions as well. So this is more like provide adequate training for all employees and students to understand cultural diversity and address issues of racism, un unconscious bias and microaggressions to pursue racial equity in the conductive to student success. Some of the suggestions is required students orientation to include anti-racism and microaggression training student rights in the grievance process, process and where to go to report instances of racism, racism and microaggression. So we have multiple of those suggestions that not only can be used by students, but also can be used by everyone within the system or system or higher education to ensure that these are the issues that students are currently facing. How can we help make a difference? Um, similar to classroom and peer um, classroom experience and peer mentor alliances, more general information, more suggestions. And we decided to make this more genetic because although we're focusing on our Native American and Indigenous students community, these are issues that impact every single student throughout the state um, from different backgrounds. So it, we just decided to make them very broad. So should this document be one of the most popular popular ones we have, they can access general feedback and advices that we as students are providing to everyone within the system. Um, and then in here, we decided not only to provide more info on the classroom experience for an American Indian and Alaska Native student, but we also provide a student story. Of course, we changed the name, but essentially this story, uh, this story, based on what we got, we shape it in a way that is broken down into different areas. So it provides a little bit of information about the person and then um, how the person ended up going to community college in hopes of expanding their knowledge and opportunities. What are some of the biggest hurdles that they faced thus far? Financial hardships being one of those academically and then lack of support services tailored to the, it, it, to the needs of indigenous students. And then also geographic isolations, which are heard from multiple individuals. That has been a big one um, because that eventually comes in with lack of access or, or limited access to transportation and then other services such as Wi-Fi and so forth, which we in our colleges don't always 
account for or or don't have the supports services or the services to support these students. But in the end, basically providing some words of encouragement. Um, and then here we do like a mini recap of like this story basically provides this information. But um, we can also input other stories. And this one is, is, is more into like, these are the, the challenges I face. But if you have other stories that you would like to share, either put your name publicly or you would like to stay anonymous, we can see how we can add that process. Because one of the goals is to ensure that this document is not very, very, ex well, it's extensive, but not to the point where people don't want to read it because it's too much. We go into some concluding thoughts. This is primarily just a way for us to say, this is the work that we've done. We acknowledge that it has taken a lot of effort, not only from our student leadership at the Student Senate, but also from our students across the state, and especially those brave students that chose to join us and provide their input on their current challenges that they're facing, what are some of the challenges that they have faced, and then how, what are, what are some of the solutions that they would like to see implemented. And then we also provided a sentence which basically states that we're looking forward to partner with our sister partners such as chancellor's office, faculty, staff, and administration, and other student organizations to break down the barriers of racism and racial inequity that are impacting the lives of students. Um, that is a, a statement that says we, as soon as this document gets done, we at the student senate at the state level are looking forward to keep working with our system partners and other organizations to ensure that we not just only collected this document which basically says this is what we need but also we are using the document to make a difference and meet those needs of the students so what are some next steps well of course we want to implement cultural com com competency training for faculty and staff to enhance understanding of native american and indigenous cultures establish support services, work towards incorporating Native American and Indigenous perspective into curriculum to ensure diverse representation, organize cultural events, celebration, awareness, campaigns, so forth, and establish feedback mechanisms to gather input from Native American and Indigenous students. And we have multiple ones, but at least from our student senate perspective, we are looking forward to start um, making land acknowledgement in our monthly board of directors meetings. That is something that we have done primarily because we want to have a student from each region we go to perform the land acknowledgement. We want to be mindful um, since most of us are not fully aware on, the, on their traditions. But that is something that we're looking forward to. Um, to give you a little bit of background, we at the Student Senate meet once a month in person or hybrid, and we travel from different parts of the states. One month we try to be in Northern California, another month we try to be in Southern California, and so forth. So and that is why sometimes it's a little difficult to get students committed to be on a certain day and a certain time to perform this, but we're looking forward to keep implementing just to ensure that we are being, um, we're following the initiatives of our DIA mission and values. And then these are some acknowledgements. So for example, these are all the members that have worked with us since the beginning. And just to remind you, this work took over a year. So in fact, chapter three was supposed to get done last year. However, there was no involvement from students and it was really hard to get it done. And that was under the purview of the last vice president as well as the last DIA committee. However, this year we decided to say, these students need to have a representation, need to have a document that basically states their needs and some of the, um, so what, what would they like to see and we need to get it done. And it has been tedious and, and of course, taken quite a good amount of time, but we're glad that we're basically in the last stages um, before it gets approved. So that's very exciting. So shout out to these members in here. But to summarize, this is essentially what we have. You all have the document to take a look. Um, and read it closely. We will start moving over to start getting some questions answered, some feedback. Like I said, this time is primarily for the students to share their opinions, to share anything that they would like to mention and so forth. But this is the work that we have thus far. Very happy of how much we have accomplished in, in the span of the year. And from that, we can answer any questions that we have and then go back to our presentation, which essentially, yes. So essentially these are some of the questions that you can start thinking. So what are some of the thoughts on this chapter? Do you like it? Do you not? What are some of the things that you would like to see added slash deleted? 
What else can be added to ensure that this document truly represents your needs? That's a big one. So those are some of the things that you all can start um, thinking about, and then we can continue. So with that, let me see if there are any questions in the chat. Um, please take your time to read the document. So there's no rush. We have a little bit over half an hour to kind of go over some of the questions that we mentioned and then so forth. Okay, so one of the questions that I've seen, um, why do I keep repeating myself? Well, that is a great question. And probably because that was at the beginning of the town hall and I forgot to record. And um, the second one is how can I make suggestions to add to the chapter? We usually provide, you know what, I, I can make the document so you all can basically be in not only viewers, but also provide suggestions and comments. So there will be <coughs> commenters. Okay, so everyone should be able to refresh there. You know, but also, Aja, if you have any, if you guys want to speak up, please feel free to raise your hand and, and you'll be recognized. There's an open forum. Yes, please. Um, I know it's okay for me to speak. Yes. Okay. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just taking back from the chat for a second. <laughs> um, well, first of all, I don't feel like uh, anyone is, um, look, I've been in this community all my life. I was, grew up in ceremony. Um, I was born, I was in the womb, I have been in ceremony. Um, I'm homo. I am native, um, and I'm here to do any one quantum politics. Please leave that out because this is us trying to actually do work for the community. We are not here to argue or fight. Um, moving on, <laughs> one suggestion I wanted to add to chapter if we are going to be um, trying to legislate for more uh, Native American programs for opportunities is I feel like we should uh, make it mandatory that for yet only 20 colleges um, at, in California have received this um, five year, uh, uh, what's it? I think it's like half a million, it's been a minute since I looked at the paperwork, but um, it's only going to, Oh, it's hard to hear me. Hold on, give me a second. Let me put some of my AirPods away. See, it just is better if I speak out. I think it's your internet connection. It's cutting out a little bit. I would say try turning off your video. Sometimes that helps with the audio. Yes, I think we're having my video off I, I think it's the internet maybe it's not necessarily um stable so it's a little hard to hear you completely i'm sorry we have really bad wi-fi at this school we're broke oh you're fine is it, is it, is it hear me now or should i grab some different headphones Try turning off the video. It usually helps. We could hear you. Just turn off the video. Okay. Try it's kind of. Um, it, it basically goes back and forth um, a little while. It goes back and forth on glitchy. Wait, I think we hear you better now. Wait, it sounds better. It sounds better? Okay. We're just going to... You guys just won't be blessed with my pretty face. I'm sorry, y'all. Anyways, um, so I think that we should include into this draft that we would want some sort of um, mandatory emergency funding, because from what I have gathered from having discussion with the Native students that attend um, my college, and what I think is kind of just like, you know, this, um, you know, uh, 
federal issue, you know, not just for our state, but we can combat that here at a local level, is that we do not have the um, funding to help out um, the students because we Native students were dropping out at a higher rate than a lot of other groups. And that's because we are trying to um, do too much of the impossible of trying to work and um, have a live, trying to get a livable wage by getting our education and then um, not being able to get that livable wage while we're in the process of getting our education. So many of us are financially struggling and we need more um, emergency funding for when those situations arise. You know, um, there's people who also need um, a lot of mental health services. You know, we come from um, a group that in, where we inherit a lot of generational trauma because of the genocide and we don't realize how much that really does affect us unless you kind of have um you know decolonized yourself and um done that work to do the mental health work but we don't have um this, this we don't always have access to the mental health care also um anyways i hope that that Thank you. And now I see that there is a comment in the chat, basically, um, from someone asking, why are there not Native American folks involved in this task force? There are members. In fact, that is one of our requirements in order to create a task force is that we need to have at least Native, at least five Native American people. Now, the reason why you see Kaylin and Jay and the leadership is because the way it works is the Student Senate is comprised of 25 members from throughout the state. This is and these individuals are elected, and then when they get elected, our SCCC president appoints these individuals to our different tasks, um, in this case, different committees. This task force, this group, this work is get, is being done through the Diversity, Equity, Anti-Racism, and Accessibility Committee, DIA, and Jay, as well as Scaling, form part of there, and then they volunteer to, to head this task force. So I think we need to be mindful and respectful of everyone. There are members, and in fact, this is one of the reasons why we're hosting the town halls to ensure that we get input from everyone from all the students into this work and we have had individuals such as Aya we have also had individuals such as Lorenz, Karis providing input on all of this work including Cesar and, and, and many others so I just wanted to point that out to ensure that everyone um, understand that this work is not just done by other individuals but is is being overseen by us, but is primarily a work in progress from everyone, um, from our American Indian and Native and Indigenous students community. And then Cesar, here you can go ahead. Yali Kualitonali, Nuanatoka Cesar Tlatwani Alvarado. Hello and good afternoon, everybody. My name is Cesar Tlatwani Alvarado. I'm the student trustee for Mount San Antonio College. Um, I, and I am also an Indigenous person that has been a part of chapter three. Um, before I continue on to my suggestions, I just wanna thank um, Yvonne, Jay and Caitlin for their leadership in chapter three. As an indigenous person, I really think it's important that we have not only members of in the community advocating on behalf of ind indigenous students, but I think our allies also play a really important role in elevating our voices. So I really do want to like emphasize my thanks to people such as Jay and Caitlin. Um, and then going off of uh, the things that Aya had mentioned, I think having a statewide organization such as uh, Umoja, um, except for Native students, would be incredibly important. I think that that's one discrepancy that I've seen within the community college system is that most of the community colleges that we come from, if not uh, a large amount, don't have indigenous centers on their campus, such as a Puente program and or a Umoja uh, for indigenous students to not only hold space together, but also to find community and find support. Um, I think that uh, we should all be well aware of the overwhelming <laughs> hurdles that indigenous students face in institutions of higher learning. And so I think having 
and advocating for a program such as Puente or Umoja on a statewide or even a national level um, and utilizing that framework and following um, their lead, I think would be incredibly important in addressing the hurdles that Indigenous students have to face within their academic journeys. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, Cesar. And we will look closely into the video recording to ensure that we document all of this information properly and we add it as well as the chat. I've seen that there's some really good comment and feedback. And yeah, for everyone else who's in the webinar, feel free to raise your hand if you wanna, if you'd like to speak, put it in the chat. Um, how are you feeling in general of this document? I know there has been some suggestions on things that we can add. Um, okay, awesome. Um, would you like to expand on that? Maybe. If not, that is fine. But um, yeah, any other input feedback from anyone? We basically have more, a few more minutes. Well, as long as we need. Uh, Lorenzo. I yeah. I am. Um... I just wanted to know, uh, in terms of the the um, task force that I'm on, like what else, uh, how else I can contribute, and uh, when else we can touch bases. Or I I know you I heard you say something about uh, possibly getting a uh, a slide together or something. I just wanted to figure out how else uh, I could contribute to that. Yes. So in terms of the task force, as soon as we get this town hall finished, I will then be checking in with the task force to implement these changes, run it by you all, see what you all think, since essentially you guys will be the ones finalizing it, and then we get it approved at General Assembly. Um, we also will be hosting another webinar at the General Assembly, and I don't know if you are planning on going or not, but we are planning on having like members who sit and, and, and essentially talk when people are, are bef before delegates vote, we're planning on, on giving like testimonials and saying like, this is the work that we've done. And this is why we believe it should get approved because it has to get voted on. If yes. it's not approved then um, we cannot move forward. But yes, I'll be, I'll be at General Assembly. And re recently uh, I went with our vice president and uh, from the college here to one of their vice president's meetings. And uh, we did a presentation on like Pomo Pathways and just a native, uh, you know, I was like a part of that, helping them build that presentation. It was about a native pathways program and the percentage of Indians. And there was like little breakout spots and it was just cool to contribute to that. Very good. We can definitely get in communications to have different workshops during General Assembly that are tailored towards our community of Native American and Indigenous students. Awesome. But I'll definitely follow up with you. I think it'll be good to meet either one on one or through the task force and see how we can best implement this area. Thank you. Jay, please. Thank you. Yeah. Um there were there are a few students um from ARC who weren't able to be here today and one program coordinator of our Native American Resource Center. Um, and they just wanted to, um, in place of, of them coming and sharing this, share what they had been working on. Um, it's mostly been in our district, but I reached out to them and just you know, offered to bring it to SSCCC um, just to give it statewide reach. Um, one thing that was really stressed was, so Hey Sus Valle is the program coordinator at American River College um for the native american resource center and he's also faculty um he is teaching anthropology and history and shared the importance of those subjects being taught with a lens not just a lens but just with input from native american and indigenous students um the importance of that the the problem with the current system that we have of it just being um whichever faculty members are elected which doesn't always come with representation um, or whichever faculty members are elected by their colleagues to sort of represent them on um, FDRG faculty review boards. Um, and so those those two subjects just being especially important. Um, and then from Maria Sapora um, from Livitz Kashkano to me, um, and she also shared um, we, we've gone through this, but I just thought, you know, to kind of uh, put a voice to what she had put into this memo um, was that 
the the problem with access. So I just wanted to echo that um, the combination of us usually not having uh, sufficient colleges around tribal lands, and then also um, us falling short on providing any sort of technological support. So that was something that is basically from the student body of uh, American River College, and that that was, was put forth by our Native American Resource Center. Thank you for sharing, Jay. Yes, we understand um, some individuals were not able to join us, but I'm glad that you are in constant communication and uh, basically sharing this feedback with us that we will definitely implement. Um, Jay, please. Hello. Um, so I'm from um, San Diego Mesa College. Um, I'm one of the delegate. I'm the senator representative and also delegate representative. Um, and I think that this is great. I know that um, we just recently had a, um, a meeting and we were talking about how there will be a study session at the SDCCD office in support of Native American students um, on April 11th and that um, and that we're, we were supposed to be um, informing students about the event. Um, and also there will be a youth and social powwow on March 16th. Um, in order to be able to promote traditional tra um, tradition education um, and that's being organized on our campus. I know that our campus doesn't really know much uh, or from from what I got from the meeting, a lot of people don't aren't don't exactly have a lot of knowledge of um, of Native American culture. And so I think that this is great. Um, I think that that this is great in promoting um, diversity and um, yeah, that's it. Thank you for sharing. Yes, and if you happen to have anything else that you would like to see, either another student story that you think really reflect, reflects a different perspective of our Native American and Indigenous students and you would like to see it here, please um, just, I'll share my email in just a second when we finish the PowerPoint. But this document is for all of our students in these communities. I am Mexican and I'm not Native American, I'm not Indigenous, so I don't necessarily belong to one. And I want to make sure that the work that I'm helping lead alongside Kaylin and Jay is something that is representing you all. Because in the end, we're here doing the work, but we're doing it for the success of these communities. And I think it's really always meaningful that the work that we're doing now has a great impact for our future generations. Um, so I'm glad that you all are here. I also see that there's some faculty and staff feedback. Please feel free to raise um, your voice. This is for students, but in the end, you all spend a lot of time with the students and we have some very good faculty individuals that really care. So um, there's some chats, in, there's some chats in um, there, some comments, but if you would like to speak up, you're more than welcome. Anyone else who would like to provide any other input? feedback, um, things that we should probably take out, things that we should add. I also see in the different comments, I'm constantly reading those. Danny, please go ahead. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Danny Silva. I do sit and serve on the Student Senate for California Community Colleges as the VP of Communications, as well as the president at Mount San Antonio College. And I do want to add that I believe um, as we do this work, it would be really great to have like some community guidelines because it can get pretty heated in terms of um, who feels they're indigenous enough to speak and who isn't sure if they have, you know, the right to advocate or you know, whether they're maybe mixed. And it would be great to have some guidelines that we could all follow to make sure that it's a safe space for all. Thank you. Yes, that is very important. And we at the Student Senate takes it very important. We actually, every time we have a board of directors meeting, we have our community agreements where we remind everyone that we're debating the idea, not the person, where we are constantly using appropriate um, name convention, uh, appropriate um just wording in general and thank you for sharing that Danny. and and i think that will be important if we can add that to the document and um on their suggestions i think that will be a great implementation and all of this can be added like i said it doesn't necessarily have to be like oh we have a maximum of five pages no it's more like we want to keep it concise but since we have a lot of feedback we just want to make sure that it truly reflects everyone and then i think there was a question from randy and the question was 
I want to ask if there's anything we can do to start helping students before they enter college. Coming from a reservation, it was difficult to live and find resources without great challenge. Yes. So any way to include seniors or juniors, students in the conversation will help them to find. That is actually a great um, question and I think a great idea. And what we can do right off the back is start partnering with our chancellor's office because although um, most of our focus has been in our community college student population, we have multiple resources that we provide to rising juniors, well, primarily seniors, but also juniors and other um, levels in our high school to ensure that they know that we community colleges are an option, a, a, a liable option for them if they want to transfer, if they want to go into the workforce, if they just want to get better um, uh, different, uh, uh, different levels. So for example, when I was in high school, I recently had moved from Mexico to here, so I didn't really know how to speak the language. So it was a community college that I was able to, to get better at public speaking, and I found that really helpful. So one, we can start reaching out with our sister partners, seeing what work they are doing in terms of um, how they are best supporting high schoolers. Two, um, we can explicitly write it down in the document, which I think we will do. And then... I can follow up with you as to what we as the student senate will try to will want to do as our own initiative, uh, not necessarily um, going based on our chancellor's office resources, but maybe something that we can start doing because we do have dual enrolled students who are high schoolers and also taking um, community college courses. So that is something that we can start doing. And like I said, I will basically leave my email at the end so we can kind of go from there and, and we can stay in contact. But are there any other questions, feedback, anything else before we start heading um, to the rest of our presentation? One last thought, Yvonne. I did type it in the chat, but um, I was thinking that uh, it would be really great to have a living document, like a resource guide for Native Indigenous uh, students to use so they could partner with organizations and nonprofits that we have maybe reached out to or utilized. Um, one, for example, that I found here local is called Lopez Farms. It's in Pomona. And as a Yaki EOME person, um, I was really inspired by them because they teach all the different variations of corn that my ancestors have used. And they also let you leave with your own set of variations in case you want to plant them at home, things like that, where we can kind of reconnect with one another and with, with our different organizations that would support us in that, something like that. No, thank you. And I think that's really important, especially as we look into the different resources that we can provide and, and just um, specifically for our community. So uh, that, thank you. And then reach, I, I see Aja provided some input following Randy. Joe, the college train. Okay, definitely feel free to keep posting things if you want to speak up or if you want to put it in the chat. I'll just go over so we can um, essentially talk about uh, our contact info and some of our upcoming events. So thank you. Um, like I said, if you have anything else you would like to share, feel free to raise your hand or post it in the chat. With the, the next thing that we wanted to share is some upcoming events that we, the SCCC, are hosting. So one of those is our SCCC Chapter 4 on Documentary Student Webinar. So this is taking place next Thursday, and it's essentially similar. It's a similar dynamic to this one, but it's for our undocumented student folks. So if you have friends, if you have classmates, if you have anyone who will be who would like to share their opinions, we we basically are at the same point in the chapter um, in terms of like the work that we have performed thus far, and we would like to bring in this opportunity for all of our undocumented students to share. It will be via Zoom, and I'll share the, the Zoom link in just a second so you can take a screenshot. Um, we will also post it through our social media and also as well as our emails, but we're looking forward to get some input and then making sure that our documents truly represent our students' populations. Another event, this is March in March. So during March 7, 2024, um, we will be at the state capitol in Sacramento doing advocacy at, um, at the Capitol, talking to our assembly members, the state centers, their offices, other organizations that are working higher, that are involved in higher education, and basically ask how can we best, uh, well, basically bring in the student perspective and then hear from them, how are they supporting us? How, what are their 
different what are the work that they are doing this is this is supposed to be a big event we're planning on hosting more than 300 students joining and we're basically invading the capital we're basically saying this is who we are these are some of the needs and this is how you can best support us so if you want more information on this there's a email from our vice president of legislative affairs chanel win which is overseeing this process but of course um, if you feel more comfortable, you can um, either email our president, executive directors, myself, anyone who you think is most appropriate. And um, this is an in-person event that is taking place on March 7th. Next, we have our General Assembly, and this is from April 5th to the 7th. This is our annual major conference that we're hosting. It's going to be hybrid and in-person in Santa Clara, um, which is in our Region 4. And this is where we vote on resolutions. This is where we elect the, the statewide leadership, such as president and VPs, um, as well as our different regional um, officers from each one of the regions. And like I said, we have 10. So if you want to get involved in the Student Senate um, and you're planning to either be there online or in person, we would love to have you. If you want to get more info, feel free to like let me know. We also, um, at the SRPC website, you can find many more details on, on this work, but we would love to have you. And, and if you're planning on, on running for something, we would love to support you um, to the best of our capabilities. So this is our document that we have. This is our town hall. You can find this on our social media. And then as we get closer, we're going to continue promoting this. It's taking place on the 29th from 3 to 4. And then this is where essentially where you can find the Zoom link. But we also make sure to send this via email. Um, and pretty similar uh, dynamic, just presenting what we have, hearing from you all, and, um, and going from there. Lastly, this is some of our contact info. So there's my email, vp at c.org. I'm very approachable anytime. There's J's, um, LAD Region 2. Um, J represents the Sacramento area. Kaylin LAD Region 3 represents the um, San Francisco East Bay area. So there's a lot of ways you can get a hold of us. Um, and, and also as for any other input and so forth. So I'll leave that for just a few more minutes in case you wanna take a picture, take a screenshot, um, and or if you already have an, our contact info, feel free to reach out at any point. And then I think there was something else. Um, okay, and then our last one is basically um, our social media. So we have Instagram, we have Twitter, which is now AX. Facebook and our website, and we'll be more than happy to connect with you all through this. Um, we are very approachable. Danny is our vice president of communications, so also helping see, um, helping provide a guidance on what should be on our social media, how we should um, try to market. I oversee anything diversity, equity, inclusion um, related, as well as any policy as vice president. Um, and so forth and also elections are coming up so in case you're curious or you have any more questions so we will be more than happy but that um if there are any other comments um other oh our glony area as well thank you okay um any other comments questions other than that we are a few minutes early but essentially that will conclude our webinar so any last minute questions concerns anything that anyone would like to share If not, we have concluded the town hall. Thank you for joining and all of you are set to go. I, I, will con I will get all of this feedback implemented into the draft and then um, we'll make sure to find a way to get it out to you all before General Assembly. Thank you so much. Thank you.